Phi Din, the director of developer Phi Games, is a fan of films such as Tron and the Matrix trilogy. The review guide from publisher Dear Villagers informs us that he also has academic experience in AI and has often wondered what it would be like to explore the virtual world of a computer from the inside. If you've ever daydreamed about doing the same thing, but in the style of a Metroidvania hacking adventure game, he's now made it possible with this new release. Let's dive into a sea of code in the Xbox era review of Recompile. Recompile starts with a menu that resembles the sort of basic green screen you used to see a lot during the 1970s and 80s. After selecting Install Program, you're dropped into a decades-long abandoned mainframe after an event known as The Collapse. As a walking figure made of orange code, you need to explore your surroundings and repair them from the inside. Guided by a system known as Janus, who also has no idea what you're going to find and has no map to help you, your main task is to figure out what the mainframe was used for originally and what events transpired to leave it in its current offline state. This sounds simple, but there are various types of security AI defending the current system state who will do everything within their power to stop you from succeeding in your mission. In the beginning, you can only walk around, but your situation is soon improved when you come across an upgrade that allows you to jump. Being a Metroidvania type game, you're required to move back and forth around the open areas of the map, finding new skills, via other upgrades, to navigate through hazards and unlock other areas. Skills such as Air Jump, which allow you to not only jump again while in the air, but also to jump just before you hit the floor to escape dying when falling from a height. Blink, the dash skill, allows you to cover greater distances vertically, and Underclock slows down the bitrate of the system or time itself. After traversing various PC parts such as cooling pipes and what looks suspiciously like the cooling grid from the top of an Xbox Series X, you discover various obstacles such as virtual stepping stones, force fields, power down escalators, and locked doors. These pieces of machinery, objects, and other progression aids are powered by interconnected logic circuitry and make up puzzles that you're required to solve to progress. Giant buttons are easily jumped on to make use of them, but depending on what inputs are required, they don't always need to be depressed to be in the required state. This can be quite challenging if your school science days are quite some time behind you, like mine were. Luckily, you can hack certain gates and even some of the AI enemies once you've unlocked the recompile ability. There is another challenge here, however, in that you can only hack devices according to the amount of bits or in-game currency that you have on you. Different hacks cost you different amounts, and these bits are gained by fighting and killing the defensive AI with a gun that you're armed with fairly early on in the playthrough. The gun can also be upgraded over time, rewarding you the various modes. For example, Disrupt is like a rifle with a punch that can kill malicious subroutines. Delete is rapid fire, but with little stopping power, and can blast holes in firewalls blocking your way. And the Overload mode acts like a pump action shotgun for close quarters fighting, but overheats after only 4 shots. The enemy AI comes in various shapes and sizes, from cubes that slowly fire green energy bolts, to triangular flying versions with automatic fire enabled, and flamethrower carrying fast flying mini pyramids. And in theory, you're able to hack these enemies and use them to defend you as long as you have enough currency and the quick thinking to do so. These enemies are terrifying enough, but when you come across the bosses in certain areas of the mainframe, they're absolutely nothing in comparison. According to Janus, you can get around certain large security AI without engaging them, but I only managed this once in my playtime for the review. Giant pyramids firing geysers of flame at you, and spider-like monstrosities are only two of the amped up entities waiting for you the further you get around the system. Some parts of the computer system are repairable, while others require you to navigate around them. Some areas need powering up, yet others need force fields to be turned off, and to shed light on the purpose and final days of the system, you need to restore any fragment of data that you find in your travels. After successfully getting to the central exchange, which acts as a hub, you are presented with access points to the other mainframe biomes, such as the Hex Data Bank, the ICO Biosphere, and the OKT Communication, which are differentiated by their colors and styles. It is then a matter of moving back and forth between the biomes, upgrading your skills, fighting off malicious AI, and solving logic puzzles to progress further. There are multiple solutions to most of the puzzles, and different ways of navigating the surroundings, and different endings depending on your choice and actions throughout the game. The game is well designed graphically, so well that you feel like you're living in an environment where code is alive all around you. But at the same time, the general color scheme is mostly black and large parts of the map are shimmering and draw themselves into solid structures as you approach them. This can be deceiving at times, as the shimmering lines can also be hazardous at the edges of rooms and they cost you lives if you touch them. Safe points can be hard to come across in certain areas of the map, which led me to become quite frustrated at times as you need to save pretty often. After a spawn, you have 11 lives before you are recovered from a backup at your last save point and these lives can be frittered away pretty quickly. The jumping mechanic can sometimes keep your momentum moving forwards after landing, 
When you combine that with a camera that can disguise drops between platforms, sections of the game turn into a precision platformer. The first section of Hex took me countless attempts before I could get to a save point, only to find another one just around the corner, which is rather annoying. In my 6 hours of playtime, which is the required time for a typical playthrough, I barely scratched the surface of what the game has to offer. I unlocked two thirds of the abilities and visited all the biomes in the mainframe, but was unable to explore further due to the complexities of the game and the limited time I had to review it. In conclusion, Recompile is not a simple proposition, although it may look like a typical 3D platforming game. At heart, it is a technically complex and at times very challenging addition to the Metroidvania genre. If you're a fan of these types of games, it's well worth checking out, but be wary if you're not a fan of the genre. Advertised as featuring intense combat, tight 3D platforming, super-powered abilities, and an environmental logic-based hacking mechanic, Recompile certainly lives up to these claims, though I would definitely recommend being aware of these before you take the game on. Thank you so much for watching. Any likes, comments, or subscribing you can do really helps the channel out. And if you do subscribe, please tick that little bell so you know whenever we post. And we will see you here next time on Xbox Era. Thank you.